Hello everyone and welcome back to The Perfect French with Dylan. Today we are going to see some weird, some funny translation between French and English. As some of you know, I live in Canada, not in the French part of Canada, but in the English part on the West Coast. My husband is an English speaker, so I end up translating a lot of things sometimes to explain how we say it in French, and that's how I came up with this list for today. Let me know in the comment which one is your favorite, and if you have another one, please share it as well. The first one we're gonna see today, and I'm pretty sure you know it because it's been around quite a lot. A potato. For us, it's une pomme de terre. Une pomme de terre. So if we take word by word in English, it's an apple of the earth. The translation I'm giving you are not anything official, okay? So don't jump on me in the comment section. Sometimes I did my best, but it's not always easy to translate, you will see. So for this one, une pomme de terre, an apple of the earth. Numéro 2, a cake, a pie server. So you know the utensil that you use to take a piece of pie or a piece of cake and put it in a plate. Well, we call it une pelle à tarte. Une pelle, pelle à tarte. Which translates to a pie shovel. So, une pelle, the shovel, and tarte is a pie. So, a pie shovel. I really like the idea of shoveling pies. <laughs> if you follow my Instagram, my private Instagram, I have two, you know that I'm really into pies. All right, next one, one of my favorite, numéro trois. When you say to have goosebumps, so, you know, when you have that shivering on your skin, those little dots, your goosebumps, you cold. Well, we say avoir la chair de poule. La chair de poule. Which translates to to have chicken flesh, you know, because it's really poetic. Chicken flesh. So I guess it comes from, you know, when you have a dead chicken, you can see that there's all those dots on the skin. I, I guess it's the only thing that came to my mind, actually. To have chicken flesh. I know, I make you dream. The next one is better, promise. When you say love at first sight, we say un coup de foudre. Un coup de foudre, which translates to a thunderbolt. So this is the same word. We use un coup de foudre for love at first sight, and then we use un coup de foudre for the thunderbolt. But usually in context, you know what you're talking about. Next one, when you say a master key, we say un passe-partout. Un passe-partout. Which translates to a pass everywhere. As easy as that. Un passe-partout. Next one, a corkscrew. You know, when you want open a bottle of wine. What well, we call it? Un tire-bouchon. Un tire-bouchon. And this one is quite detailed, you will see. So it's literally a pull cork. That's just that. Un tir bouchon. This one, everybody has one, a wallet. Well, for us, it's un portefeuille. Un portefeuille. Which translates to a piece of paper holder. Un portefeuille. This one is very good as well. A rainbow. For us, it's un arc-en-ciel. Un arc-en-ciel. And this is perfect for this month. Un arc-en-ciel. Well, it translates to an arc in the sky or an arc in the sky. Un arc-en-ciel. My favorite, which is quite weird, but the, I think the story is, is funny, ki kind of funny. I hope it's funny. So when you say a mortician, we say Un croque mort. Un croque mort. Maybe some of you know that story, I don't know. For this one, it was hard to find a translation. I came up with a dead biter, a dead cruncher, cr cruncher of the dead. Ugh, I don't know, it was actually really hard. I will explain the story, you will understand very quickly. 
So un croque-mort, we used to call them that because apparently back in the days, mortician, to make sure that the person was dead, they used to bite the big toe of the person. Because if they were not dead, they were going to wake up, you know. If they were less dead than what they thought, to avoid any mistake, the person was supposed to wake up. That's why we call them croque-mort. The dead biter, the dead cruncher. I don't know how to translate that. So some people say this is not true. Some people say it's true. We're not exactly sure. But that's just a funny story. Next one, a bra. Which is quite, you know, just one word in English. But for us, it's un soutien-gorge. Un soutien-gorge. So soutien is holder. So you could... Why am I doing my hands like that? So you can think that, you know, it's going to be for breast, breast holder. Actually not. It's a throat holder. Why? I don't know. It's just like that. Un soutien gorge. Next one. When you say a midwife or a doula, we say une sage femme. Une sage femme. Which translates to a wise woman. It probably comes from back in the day. That was probably the person who knew the most. So, une sage femme. So, when in English you say a headband, we call it un serre-tête. Serre-tête. So, serre comme from the verb serré, which means to squeeze. And tête, of course, is head. So, it's a head squeezer. Un serre this one, if you follow me on Instagram, I just share a video about that that someone made for me that was very cool. You can go check it out, it's still on it. An appetizer for us, it's un amuse-bouche. Un amuse-bouche. Which translates to an amuse-mouth. An amuse-mouth, I don't know. An amuse-bouche. This one, I'm not too sure why we have a difference. But when you say a ponytail, for us, it's une queue de cheval. Une queue de cheval. It means a horse tail. So when you say a ponytail, we say a horse tail. That's all the one I found. I hope you enjoy. I hope you learned something. If you have other ones, don't hesitate to share them in the comments. Also, let me know your favorite. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And I will see you soon for another lesson.